Welcome to Westlake on this really special Easter weekend. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, some of you have been able to join us for our in-person gathering. But wherever you are, uh, whenever you're joining us here online, we are really glad that you've chosen to be with us on this special weekend as we celebrate all that Jesus has done for us through his life and his death and his resurrection. I'm not going to wish you a happy Easter. I'm going to wish you a significant Easter. Amen. What sort of promise was this? What sort of Messiah had come? That in the hands of mere men, his life would succumb? What happened to the miracles? What happened to calming the waves? Now there's only darkness surrounding, and there's hell to be paid. It wasn't supposed to end this way. He had only just begun. And the prophecy told us he was supposed to be the one. The one who bring freedom from these laws like prison chains. The one who reconciled the people by the power of his name. Yet here he is, betrayed and deserted on a cross. And after crying out to his father, even he seems lost. And as he exhaled his last, the whole earth shook in a rage. The veil was ravaged, and the Savior was slain. But lo, in the grave he would not stay. For death could not hold the Savior at bay. For the darkest of night comes just before dawn, and with the next breath he took, the Messiah had won. And as he emerged from that tomb, no longer a slave to the darkness that swore it would swallow his name, the cords of his death trembled, retreated, and cowered, his sentence repealed by the evidence of his power. And behold, a new age dawned of redemption through grace, where the stains of our sins could no longer be traced, forever washed clean by the blood that he shed, made new in the life that was raised from the dead. And what do we have to do to receive such a prize, simply call on his name and open our eyes. For his name is the name that changes our story. When our tongues profess the name of the King of glory, and not Herod, not Judas, not a Roman or high priest, not a tempter, not a serpent, not the rugged corpse of a tree could ever stop, ever stall any part of his plan. For his name is Jesus, the great I Am. A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you?
is the body of our Lord Said truly this was Jesus Christ our Savior He looked with fear upon his sword Then turned to face his Christ and Lord Fell to his knees Took from his head the thorny crown And wrapped him in a linen gown Then laid him down to rest inside the tomb The holes in his hands, his feet inside Now in our hearts we know he died Three days went by, again they came To move the stone, to bless the slain With oil and spice anointing, hallelujah But as they went to move the stone They saw that they were not alone For Jesus Christ has John chapter 20 Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? 
Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Loving Lord, today we remember transforming to the brightest light. The most dreadful end, becoming the most beautiful beginning. Speaking, calling her name, it's the 
the master, the Lord, raised to life again. The voice that spans the years, speaking life, stirring hope, bringing peace to us, will sound till he appears, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. Well, it's Easter, and actually this is my second Easter message that I'm giving on video. What a year it's been with COVID. I wonder if I was to ask you, what one word would sum up your experience over the last year? What would that word be? I know for me that it would probably be separation. Uh, it's over a year since I've been able to go back to Scotland and, and so I, I've been separated from my, my, my family and friends. I'm also aware that that experience of separation it, is something that resonates with me. I, I really understand it because you see the Word of God says that at a more fundamental level uh, as a human being, my life up to a certain point was an experience of separation. The Bible says that I've got a, a much more serious virus than COVID. It, it says that I was infected by sin. And, and in fact, as we'll think in a little moment, it says that we were all infected by sin. Now, sin is a tremendously unpopular concept and work today but I think we need to understand what it means so what does sin mean the word sin whenever you read it in our English Bible nearly always translates the Greek word hangmatia and that literally means uh, to miss the mark so if you were throwing a, a dart at a dartboard and you missed the bullseye or, or perhaps missed the, the whole uh, target completely that that's what sin is it's missing the mark and if we apply it to a life it says that we are missing the mark in life in life we are living off target there, there's something out of sync with our life 
It's saying that at times we don't aim for what we know is right in life. I've got to confess that, that I'm a sinner. Do you know how I know I'm a sinner? I know I'm a sinner because there is a me that I know that often knows what is right and yet chooses to do what it knows to be wrong. And it's not just me. Uh, here's how one of the earliest Christian leaders describes his experience of being a sinner. And I know that you're going to understand what he says. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. Paul's saying sometimes I, I, I know the right thing to do, but I hate the fact that I choose to do the wrong thing. I miss the mark. In fact, I don't even aim at it sometimes. No wonder the Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short. All sinned and not hit the target. And if we're honest, every one of us knows that we've been in situations where we know what the right thing is to do. And very deliberately, we have chosen not to do it. And if you know that's true of you, and I know that it is, it puts you in the category of being a sinner. And that makes an impact on our life. That probably most of us have had married friends who, who have come to us and said, we're going through a separation. And what they mean is that, that something's happened, that it's caused a rift in their relationship. Something's happened that, that's driven a wedge between them. And the Bible says that, that because of our sin, we too have experienced a separation. Much more than COVID has separated me from my family and my loved one. Sin has separated me. And the Bible says that, that this separation that sin causes has a, a kind of cascading of impact on our life. It, it says that sin separates us from other people. So we, we've talked about how we can see that happening in marriages at times. We've not got time to unpack this, but the Bible actually says that sin separates us from ourselves, would you believe in and the person that we were created to be, but at the, the deepest level, the Bible says that sin separates us, drives a wedge between us, causes a rift in our relationship between us and God. Uh, and the prophet Isaiah really sums up the whole of the teaching of the Bible when he says in Isaiah 59, your iniquities, that's your sin, your missing the mark, have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah says, your sin has separated you from God, caused a rift in your relationship. Whenever I talk about this to, to people, I, I very often hear them saying either outright or in effect, well, well you know, okay, I, I'm a sinner. I, I, you know, I, I don't do the right thing sometimes, but I'm not that bad. I mean, I, I'm not a murderer. On balance, I, I probably do more good than bad. And, and I reckon over the course of my life that, that at the end, God, God he, he's going to accept me. This next year, this year, the Olympics will happen in Tokyo. Now, imagine if you took that kind of reasoning uh, with the athletes and, and an athlete that had been found to have used an enhancing uh, performance, enhancing drug, went to the authorities and said, well, well you know, it, it, it's not really that serious. The, the, there was only a little bit of that banned substance in my blood. We know the authorities would say, well, the standard is zero. You're clean or you're unclean. And God says when it comes to sin, the standard is zero. 
Or imagine if someone was to go and give blood and they said, well, but well, listen, I, I've got hepatitis and I, I've got HIV, but, but it's fine, you know, I, I've only got a little bit of it in my blood. Most of my blood is clear of infection. We know that the, the medical authorities would say, well, the acceptance of blood when it comes to infection, the standard is zero. And the Bible says that we've all been infected by something much more serious in the long run than HIV or hepatitis, it's sin. And, and the Bible says that the standard is zero. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We are all separated from God. I'm really glad that, that there's good news about my separation from friends and family. There's a separation solution, there's a vaccine and it's not happening fast enough for me and I'll need to be patient but I know that when I've had the vaccine and enough people in Scotland and here in Switzerland have had the vaccines, I'll hear the good news that my separation is over and that I can go and be with my family and friends. And today is Easter Sunday. And today is the day that those of us who have chosen to be Christians on purpose celebrate good news. And the good news of Easter is there is a separation solution for our sin. We celebrate the fact that through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, God has brought about a separation solution for our sin. And that separation solution isn't a vaccine, it's forgiveness. And our forgiveness is provided for us through Jesus' death on the cross. If you like, if, if sin is like an infection on our, in our blood, we, we've had a, a blood transfusion or, or what the Bible would say is that we've had a righteousness infusion. The good news of Easter is that because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, this separation solution for sin is, is open to us all. It says in 1 John, the blood of Jesus, and, and the blood of Jesus there is shorthand for Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, purifies us from all unsin. Yes, sin does make us unclean, and infected and unacceptable and separated from God. But here we are told the solution is the blood of Christ, his death in our place has dealt with our sin. He's accepted the punishment upon our sin. And we've had this righteousness transfusion. And so he's taken all of our unrighteousness, all of our sin upon himself, and he gives us an infusion of his righteousness. And that means that when God looks on us, he forgives us. And that barrier between us and him is taken away. And all of our sins, past, present, and future, are cleansed and wiped out and as a result God's word says that our separation from God is over. Just listen to what it says in the book of Ephesians. But now in Christ you who were once far away, who have been separated, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Christ's sacrificial death brings us near to God. It's a solution for our separation. Uh, new police officers always get the worst jobs. Uh, and when I was a, a newly minted out of police college constable, my sergeant took me to a terrible job. We, we went to a house that looked really respectable outside, a nice Victorian villa. But inside, a, a, an old woman had died, and for years and years and years, she had thrown away nothing. And so, literally from the floor almost to the ceiling, in every room downstairs, there was rubbish everywhere. And my job was uh, to try and find her will, uh, and also, believe it or not, catch her cats. Uh, I can still smell that house. And... 
It's always made me think of people's lives and, and how outside we, we, we often look so respectable, but inside we, we store up all this garbage and rubbish and it accumulates over a lifetime. And we've got guilt and regret over what we've done when we have hurt other people and hurt ourselves by knowing the right thing that we should have done but choosing to do the wrong thing. And I suspect that some of you who are watching this are carrying around guilt from your past. There are things that you did in the past that, that in the quietness of your own mind you're ashamed of when you think of it. And there are things that you've done that you know have separated you from other people. And the great good news, the message of Easter is that we can get rid of all of this garbage inside that separates us from other people and ourselves and from God. I had to get a squad of council workmen in to clean that old woman's house. And the message of Easter is that because of his death and resurrection, Jesus can clean out the garbage in your life that separated you from God. Listen to this promise from God's word. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And there we are promised that, that, that Jesus, when he forgives us, he cleans out our life, he purifies us. But it does say that that can't happen unless we confess our sin, unless we own up to being sinners, unless we stop claiming that either we haven't sinned or, or our sin isn't really that experience. And so an essential step in getting rid of this sin that separates us from God is confessing that we are sinners. Saying to God, Lord, that I knew what was right, but I chose what was wrong and it separated me from you. And we've got to come clean about the sin in our life so that God can clean up that sin in our lives. I, I just love the way a preacher called Broxy Cave puts it. He says, Jesus undoes the separation that sin has caused. He pulls that very separation that sin is into his body on the cross and drags it down into death once and for all. And when he rises again, the sin stays dead and buried. And so if sin separates you from God, then Jesus' death and resurrection reunites you. It reunites you with the person that you were meant to do. It can heal relationship, but it reunites us with God. And this has all been accomplished by Jesus. And I need to ask you now if you've accepted what Jesus has done for you. You know, for, for me to end this separation, the, the, there are a couple of things that are going to have to happen. First of all, I, I've got to believe that there's a serious problem. I've got to believe that COVID exists and it's deadly and it's serious. Next, that I, I've got to believe that there's a solution. I have to believe that the scientists have come up with a vaccine that really works. And next, that I need to trust that if I take that vaccine, that it will give me immunity. But do you know if I, I just believe there's a problem? If I, if I just believe that there's a solution and if I took that vaccine that it would give me immunity, I, it still wouldn't solve my separation problem. I would have to go and actually get the vaccine. And it's the same with your separation problem. You have to believe that you have a problem. You have to confess that, that you're a sinner and your sin is serious and it's a problem and it's separated you from God. And you have to believe that there's a solution. You have to believe what we've just celebrated over this week, that Jesus lived, 
that he died in your place on the cross, that he rose again, and that because of his life, death, and resurrection, your sin can be forgiven. And you have to trust that it would work for you. That if you were to invite Jesus to forgive you, that your sins would be forgiven and you would be reconciled to God. But lastly, just like me and the vaccine, you're going to have to actually take the medicine. And you know what? It, it, it's not about getting an injection. It's about coming before God. And it's a very simple but really significant prayer that I want to read and it says, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I now ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sin and rose from the dead. And I now turn from my sin and invite you to come into my life. And I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. And I want to speak to the people now who, who have not taken that final step. You could do that today. Easter could be more than a day in the calendar for you. It could be the day that changed your life. And when I finish that, that prayer is going to appear on the screen and it will be there for a minute or two. And if you were to pray that prayer, God's Spirit would bring his forgiveness into your life and reconcile you to God and be the, the solution for your separation. And we would love to connect with you and help you in your journey in following Jesus. And so there'll be an email address and I would really love you to email me so that we can chat about this. Amen.